joining us now is OG, OG Nika, Judix. That's the of the week, isn't it? Yes. 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 Okay. Right. I, I, I love I, 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 I Come listen to these people. Oh. They are going to show you. How are you this morning? We are watching today. No, Friday is the day you call me Ayomi Day. So my Ayomi Day. No, actually today uh, is Ayomi. <laughs> How are you this morning? Perfect. What about you, Mr. K? Friday. Friday. That's the first one. That's the first time I'm hearing that. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, former President Donald Trump on Thursday returned to microblogging platform X, formerly known as Twitter, firing off his first message in more than two and a half years shortly after he surrendered at an Atlanta jail on charges he conspired to overturn his 2020 election loss. Trump posted a photo of his mugshot and the words, election interference, never surrender, along with a link to his website, which directs to a fundraising page. It was Trump's first post since January 8, 2021, when Twitter suspended his account indefinitely, citing fears he would incite additional violence following the deadly storming of the U.S. Capitol building in Russia. President Vladimir Putin made his first comments since the plane crash that apparently killed Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin. Putin said the head of the mercenary group was a talented person who made serious mistakes in life. The Russian president also sent condolences to the families of all 10 people said to be on board the plane that went down northwest of Moscow on Wednesday, August 23rd. In Zimbabwe, the police on Thursday arrested 41 election monitors for allegedly trying to disrupt the voting process during the general election held on Wednesday, August 23rd. The 41 persons arrested from civil society groups were accused of attempting to announce results before the state's elections body, who, by law, are the only people that can declare a winner. The 41 people have been charged with breaking electoral law. Under sports, World Football's governing body, FIFA, on Thursday opened disciplinary proceedings against Spanish Football Federation President Luis Rubiales after he kissed star player Jenny Hermoso on the lips after Spain's victory at the Women's World Cup final. FIFA will look at whether his actions constitute a violation of Article 13 in its disciplinary code concerning offensive behavior and fair play. According to reports in Spain, Ruviales is set to announce his resignation today, Friday, August 25th. Finally, on our entertainment, Arise Play Productions is set to air the first ever interview a 15-time Grammy-winning gospel singer, C.C. Winans, here in Nigeria. The gospel singer, who has since cemented her status as one of the most accomplished and celebrated women in modern music history, has received stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame, and has sold over 17 million records worldwide. The 58-year-old singer spoke about her career, which has lasted over four decades, her new projects, as well as her stunning duet with the late singer, Whitney Houston. I present to you, Cece Winans. We at Arise have a special place in our hearts for you, especially for your duet with Whitney Houston, for the Waiting to Exhale movie soundtrack. With so many to choose from, Cece, do you have a favorite collaboration? I, I, and I, I don't want you to say your famous brother BB is your, is your favorite, because that would be cheating. <laughs> I can't say BB, I can't, I can't say well, I think you said it, I think you said it, my, my duet, yeah, yeah. BB's definitely my favorite, that's yeah. just, that's it, that's home, yeah. um, but, but, but I think you hit it, you, you hit it on the, the, the head, the nail on the head, and that is the count on me with Whitney, um, was, was definitely 
up there. Um, we had a chance also, BB and I, to record with Aretha Franklin, which was amazing because there's so many great voices out there that we've been able to sing with that is just humbling. But but Whitney's was extra special because we were truly friends. We were truly sisters. All right. This interview is going to be on Arise Play. It's going to air today on Arise 360. I love yes. this of CC Our first interview in Nigeria. Arise she gave it to Arise. Original. Arise. Yes, <laughs> fantastic. So you can catch it on Arise 360 and it's going to be streaming on Arise Play. Absolutely. I know you love CC. She was fantastic. Yes. I felt so comfortable talking to her. She, I, mean, I mean, you could tell. Yeah, she was the, laughing the whole you time. Were, you, even you, you know, you can tell from a, an interviewer's yes. body language how well she enjoyed the Absolutely. interview. Absolutely. You were laughing. It seemed like both of you were friends. You looked really relaxed. And I'm glad that she's spoken to Arise for the exclusives. Yes. <laughs> because Arise Play in particular, because this woman is a legend, pure Absolutely. and simple. She has been in active, um, you know, um, uh, music for 42 years, since 1981. Yes, yes. Over 17 million records sold. She is a legend. And she, you know, the brilliant thing is that she has remained consistent. Absolutely. Like, hardly any scandal to her name. I mean, aside from some political here and there, mm -hmm. things but here and there. But she's such a legend. Yes. Whether in the gospel scene, Scene, in the American music scene, her name is definitely etched on the sands of time. Complete legend. I told my son about it. I oh. said, I interviewed Susie and she's won 15 Grammys. He's like, oh my goodness, that's more than Michael Jackson's Grammy. Amazing. But I mean, it's a gospel music genre. So yeah. amazing. Congratulations to Arise Play for this exclusive. Well, let's begin what's trending. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Thursday said a clerical error is responsible for discrepancies on the certificate issued to him by the Chicago State University. Well, according to Tinubu's lawyers, an unidentified clerk of the university made the error about the date the school stated on his recently issued certificate. Tinubu's lawyers argued that the university incorrectly wrote the date of graduation as June 27, 1979, instead of June 22, 1979, along with a change in the university's logo which created the appearance of differences between an earlier issued diploma and the one issued in response to a 2022 subpoena. The claim is in their response to a suit filed by former Vice President Atiku Abubakar seeking the disclosure of Tinubu's academic records from the university. Well, users on social media have shared mixed reactions. Before I take tweets, Rufai, mm. you know, I'd love for you to just chime in here because you know that this issue of whether certificates forgery has been, you know, on the forefront of all eyes on the judiciary. No, but we just have to state clearly that anything happening in American courts is of no consequence mm -hmm. to what the judiciary has reserved a date for radio. This is separate mm -hmm. from it. But there's been many conversations around this Chicago debacle. And many cases have been filed. Mm -hmm. And many subpoenas have been issued, all right, as regards this. And some actors somewhere have orchestrated also many lies. One of them, I think we had to talk about this around November last year, was that we brought to fore that there had been a case filed as regards this conundrum of certificates mm. at the court in Abuja, I think it was the Federal High Court or something, I don't know the jurisdiction of the court now, where Enahuru Eba, a lawyer said that he had instructed his partner, Knowles, in Chicago to subpoena Chicago to get details of you know, degrees and all of that, and school records and all of that. And he said this was at variance with what the president, you know, now yeah. sent to INEC then. Right. There's that conundrum. And I think we talked emphatically as regards this. That was what happened then. Now, Alaji Atiku Abubakar in America, also using the court system to be able to know more. And in fact, I think... For the sake of clarification, you know, somebody had claimed that they even went to Chicago. <laughs> and I know that somebody, somebody. <laughs> the point I made yes. was the person claimed they went to Chicago on the 19th mm. of September. That was the day they visited Chicago. But why is it that the document the person claimed Chicago gave them was unsigned 
and it was dated in June. So there's been a lot of conundrum, and I would like the courts to be able to unpack it. But Alaji Atiku Abaka has filed in America, mm -hmm. and the response of the Tinubu team now is the fact that there was a clerical error as regards date of graduation and the likes and all of that. Whatever it is, this matter is sub judice and the court will rule. What I just gave is a hitherto background. I will not talk about the matter that is sub judice. Right. All right. But there's been a lot of back and forth and confusion as regards this. So let's see how this court process pans out. The deposition and the reportage is all there for all to read. Right. Pure and simple. Well, you know that the United States had given a Tinubu until August 23rd. That is what, two days ago? Yeah to, you know, give reasons as to why his records should not be released to the former vice president. In, um, as it has been mentioned already, it's, this matter has come up a number of times. And um, in the last election, it tried to, you know, some people try to bring it up again, especially Absolutely. from the opposition. And it is important, even though it has no bearing on the judgment that's reserved by, you know, that's in court currently mm -hmm. in terms of the presidential election um, petition tribunal, I think it's important for Nigerians to know the truth, mm -hmm. even if it's just for to put it on the record. And then Chicago, one thing about the United States of America is that they, they will uphold the rule of law. And so even though Chicago State University hitherto had not wanted to and had given a post dated um, date to release the details of, um, of, of um, you know, of, of the school records, by the act of law, the former um, vice president, former vice president Atuku has been able to and place a demand for them to release it. So the onus would be on them then to see if they are going to do so or not. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, even though as has been established, it has no bearing on the judgment, it is important for Nigerians to know the truth. And let's put to pay, let's put pay to this conversation around, oh, where's your background? What school did Absolutely. you attend? What school didn't you attend? I think we just, let's just have closure. You know, as a people, I think that's all that I would say about this one. Yes, absolutely. Well, we'll move on to another story. Hanatu Musawa, the Minister of Art and Culture and Creative Economy, has been confirmed as a seventh member of the Youth Corps, NYSC. Confirmed that yesterday. The report follows a claim by the Human Rights Association of Nigeria, a civil society organization, that Musawa is undertaking the one year mandatory youth service scheme while she is still a member of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's cabinet. Kayode, your right. name just came off my head. <laughs> but the, we discussed them, Hanatu, yesterday. Yes. And unfortunately, she has come under fire because of this whole situation. And I know that the President Tinubu's cabinet had inaugurated a team for NYSC. And it's unfortunate that, you know, she's still a serving member, member. of... I NYSC and she's been confirmed her age. as a minister. You, did you, what did you say? I said I should Google her age. Oh, no, she started I mean, it's not about the yeah. age, actually, at this but point. I thought no. age is a factor in NYSC. No, when you graduate before you are 30. Yes. If you graduate after you are 30, absolutely. then you get exemptions. Before absolutely, you're 30. absolutely. So even if you graduate before you are 30, you can do it any other time. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. So, I think for how yeah, she... That's like Kemi's case. No, not Kemi's case. Kemi, no, the has was forged. It that's the, forged. It's not forged. It's just the case of if you're not... Uh, if you don't have the certificate, you cannot serve, so... Okay. I was just going to say Go that ahead, I really I, uh, want the women on this cabinet to do well. Yes. Because already we didn't even meet the quota of 35% that the president had promised us. But, you know, nevertheless, it is important that this controversy had come um, during the Buhari um, administration when she was, for the same reason of the NYSC, mm. she, wasn't, um, she wasn't allowed to go through by the House, mm. uh, by, the, by, the, by the Senate. And unfortunately, again, it's becoming a cha it's, it has come up again. It will now come to um, bear whether the president would say that she's serving, um, they've redeployed her to ministerial office to serve her out her um, you know, youth corps. I don't know if that is even legal, mm. you know, or um, post that, but yeah. again, I hope it will be resolved. I yeah. hope, I, I wish I would. And you know, this whole um, situation with the unemployment rate, she also um, posted a tweet about that and she came under fire. She wrote, um, breaking unemployment rate drops to 4.1%. Nigeria <laughs> is moving forward. I mean, this is just a ridiculous situation because as you know, like we have discussed it, what is the reason for this drop? As yesterday, the National Bureau of Statistics said that there, you know, there's been that sharp drop on unemployment. Uh, you know, they said that the figures are based on the new methodology of labor force survey undertaken in collaboration with the World Bank. 
an international labor organization. Let me just take one tweet. Um, this is from, uh, this is an anonymous tweet. This person says, the biggest fraud and the most dangerous in leadership or management is to deliberately produce wrong data or information. The result is assured disaster. Someone has BP of 190 <laughs> over 140, but tells the doctor, my BP is 120 over 80. Who will die? Another Twitter user, um, Atedo Peterside, also wrote, according to StatiSense, South Africa's unemployment rate is 32.6%. We in Nigeria have brought ours down to 4.1%. The only catch is that we brought unemployment crashing down because NBS Nigeria changed methodology of unemployment. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Rufai, I don't know whether I should laugh or cry. Well, all right, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all next week.